We live in a time where we need to be very discerning about who we listen to. Hi, my name is Keith and this is My Daily Walk. If you've been joining me over the last few months um, with My Daily Walk, you know that it's a daily devotional that I do um, and it was intended originally for me to be uh, on a walk and kind of doing a video and sharing what the Lord has placed on my heart. But recently um, I have had kind of an injury to my lower back that has caused me to not do a whole lot of walking. And so uh, today my daily walk is in my backyard and I'm enjoying a beautiful spring day as I uh, sit here and hang out with my dog and my family and we're getting ready for church. It's a Sunday morning. And so um, today my daily walk is kind of relevant to being a Sunday and a day for church because Paul is telling us that we need to um, really be on alert and listen to the voices that, that we hear in the Christian world. And um, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, there's a lot of churches that spring up and they, they preach a message that is relevant to the world and relevant to the social uh, things that are going on, but they don't preach the gospel. They don't talk about Christ and, and repentance and sin and hell and death and, and, and all of the things that are wrapped up in what we would consider sound doctrine. And so today I'm reminded that I need to be very careful of the voices uh, in the Christian culture that I listen to. Recently we've had another church in Dallas, Texas that uh, shut down, a big mega church. So we have uh, a New York mega church that recently shut down because the pastor was having an affair. Um, we have another uh, mega church in Dallas, Texas that is shut down now because the pastor and his wife have been using funds for personal use and, and using them for vacations and buying things for their children and big houses and clothing and cars. And, and it's just a misuse of funds. But these churches are packed full of people. And the reason they're packed is exactly what Timothy says here. The, the, uh, the pastors are saying and preaching a message that tickles the ear. So let's see what, what Paul says here in, in uh, 2 Timothy. So we'll be in uh, chapter four, verses three and four. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from the listening to the truth and wander off into myths. And we see that a lot in our culture today. We have a church right by our house and they, um, they are promoting an agenda that is counter-Christian, but they do it in the name of Jesus, which I don't understand why you would want to label yourself with Jesus, but then preach a different gospel. It really doesn't make sense. And so where Paul says here, they don't endure sound doctrine, I, I actually was in a kind of a Facebook dialogue with this person one day, and he really said that doctrine isn't the issue. Loving people like Jesus is the issue. And so if we love people like Jesus, we're going to do what the Bible says. We're going to encourage them to read it, to live it, and to practice it in their own daily lives. And so if we encounter these people, I know that there's other verses in the Bible that say, basically flee from this type of teaching. But here's the problem. People like you and I, we want to be affirmed. We want to be affirmed in our lifestyle. We want to be affirmed in the things that we do. We want to be affirmed even in our sin. We want people to say, hey, that's okay. And you know, make us feel good about ourselves. And I'm not saying Christianity doesn't make us feel good because I feel so much joy in the Lord, even in you know, my, my leg injury or back injury these days, even in when things don't seem to be going the way they should. That's where the true joy comes from. But when we're being affirmed in our sin or in our lifestyle or in the things that we want to do and accomplish and, and motivated in business and all of these other things, that isn't lasting affirmation. That isn't lasting and true joy. Our true joy comes when we understand the doctrines of God and live them and follow them because we want to please our Savior. 
When our churches become an entertainment center, when they become a place where we can go because they have amazing uh, music and fancy lights and, and videos and all of those things that, that the world has, when our churches become that, and they don't become a place for us to rest in Christ and cry out to the Lord in repentance and to be filled and, and just brought to a place of just complete and utter surrender before Christ. If our churches just become an entertainment center, the world can offer that. And they do, they do it through movies and culture and entertainment and plays and, and Hollywood and, and all of these other things, sports even. You know, if we get more excitement out of going to a sporting event than we do about going to a church service, then our focus is in the wrong place. But one of the things that's challenging as a believer in Christ is finding the right church. It's hard to spot a fake when we're not in the Word of God. I know that there's people that I am very close to who have come out of a church out of Houston, Texas, and um, you know they were caught up in that for four or five years, and then they realized they're not teaching from the Bible. This is guy, he's a motivational speaker. And thankfully, they were able to, through understanding and reading their word, see the discrepancy. But spotting a fake isn't all that easy. And so for you and me, it requires us to be in the word, to trust and or to listen to men and women of God that we trust, that know the Bible. If you hear a message and there's a little bit of scripture and a whole lot of counseling, or a little bit of scripture and a whole lot of cultural relevance, a little bit of scripture and social justice, you're probably hearing from a messenger that isn't See, saying sound doctrine as Paul's saying in these verses. So my encouragement to you today is to be discerning. Discern the things that you hear, that you read, that you put into your mind and your thoughts and your heart. I know for me, I listen to a lot of messages throughout each week and um, I have to be very careful. Someone recommended a pastor to me one day and I was listening to it on a podcast as I was walking, walking the dog on my daily walk. and. Um, he said something that struck me and I was thinking to myself, wow, I really need to research this guy before I start telling people because I had told a couple people, hey, I heard of this new guy that, you know, he's been around a while, but I've never heard of him. And, and I started listening and I was like, well, my goodness, this guy is he's off. And so I started doing some research and found out that he really is in a different place than I am when it comes to doctrine. And so we really as believers have to do our homework. We have the internet, we have resources, we have pastors in our lives who can help us and walk us through these things. So if you hear a message from someone that just seems a little bit off, line it up with scripture. And how we do that first and foremost, I think, is we need to pray. We need to ask the Lord to open our eyes, open our hearts, say, Lord, give me wisdom and discernment when it comes to doctrine. James chapter one, verse five says, he will give wisdom for those who ask it, ask for it. And so if we believe the Bible, then we have to believe that God will give us wisdom. First John chapter four, verse one says that we have the Holy Spirit in us and we can test the spirits of men. And so when we pray and we tap into the Holy Spirit, we will be able to discern, as Paul says in these verses, to discern who the true teachers of the Bible are. And as I said earlier, if you look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, we need to search the scriptures. We need to dive into the, the Word of God and really discern for ourselves who are the false teachers, who's the prosperity gospel teachers, who's teaching health and wealth gospel teachers, who are the Word of Faith that, you know, pray and healing teachers that, that just, they're out for the money. They're out for trying to gain another dollar off of their, their congregations. And so trust in the Lord. Pray, read your scriptures, and trust in the Holy Spirit as he guides you and you follow after those who know the Word of God. Paul says to follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what I've done over my life is I've, I've asked the Lord to put men and women into my life that I can look to as they follow Christ. And so I pray that you do that as well.
So that's what I've got for you today. I'm glad to be back. I had to take a week off, um, but I, I'm really looking forward to the next several weeks as I go through uh, the Bible and read and do these videos. And I ask also if you could pray for me as I have some decisions to make. Um, I don't know if I end up with back surgery or if I'm going to just try to do some natural things. I, I just really don't know. And so I could use prayer, two things, one for the pain and two for uh, wisdom, that God will give me wisdom in, in the direction to take when it comes to this, this uh, physical struggle that God has placed on me. So may you be blessed today. May, if you need prayer, continue to connect with us. We always appreciate that. We always love praying with people. But most of all today, I encourage you to walk daily in Christ. God bless you today.